South Carolina studios of W L C N Viewpoint. Mrs. Busby is holding forth here. Uh, do you have some things that you want to ask John Fulton right now? I wanted to ask... I want to let you in because I have some questions. Okay, I, I'll be quick. <laughs> I just wanted to say that our telephone number is 648-5510. If anyone yeah. has any questions other than Bill's and my questions, they're welcome to jump right in there. Yeah, this is not a proprietary show. We do welcome uh, guests and or comments. Uh, John, the Master Gardener Program, we referred to that earlier. Uh, that's uh, quite a good, decent thing around here. We have a number of people who get involved in that. Uh, could you take us uh, through the Master Garden program and how that has evolved and, and what it's doing now? It's quite important. Well, it actually was possible, I guess, when we moved to our new office location about 11 years ago. We finally had some meeting space where we could uh, consistently offer those programs, and it's very intensive training. They go through... Uh, 10 or 11 all-day meetings on training and they have quizzes every week and then a final exam they have to pass and oh, then they become a trainee. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not a master gardener yet. We're training. not a master gardener yet. They actually have to donate 60 hours of community service through the program before they're designated a master gardener. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, 16 people who are currently trainees that just completed training last fall. And Logan County is one of the two counties in the state with kind of the oddball <clears throat> training system. We alternate every other year in the fall. Everybody else does it January through April. And we go September through roughly Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, after they uh, do that, and they have to pay to take the class too. The manuals are wonderful. It's one of the best reference books you can buy for about a hundred bucks really but, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's not a free class either but uh -huh. then to continue to be a master gardener they have to give 30 hours of community service a year and take 10 hours of continuing education credits okay so it, it's a very intensive program and every county gets to set up their own program and in uh, Logan County, the group here is more project-based, so I'm sure everybody's seen some of their projects, like Latham and Scully Parks. Mm -hmm. They did the landscaping at the library. Uh, they're, they're public projects, you know. Mm -hmm. We can't go to Bill's house, dig out the tree, and yeah. that more kind of thing. More's the pity. Yeah, <laughs> more's the pity on that, right. Uh, they also do uh, the demonstration beds around the fairgrounds. That's neat. Uh, a lot of them on their own work at different cemeteries, uh, the Atlanta Flower Buds program, yes. all those kinds of things involve a lot of master gardener time. And uh -huh. currently, uh, we have uh, about 42 master gardeners and about another 16 trainees. Mm -hmm. So we're approaching the 60 number for Logan County. You go down to Sangamon County, and they they operate the help desk down there and answer most of the horticulture questions yeah. and they're running about a hundred and fifty mm -hmm. master gardeners and another uh... twenty twenty five trainees just went through the program oh, my. so very uh, large does the, every county have no a master not every uh... there's probably a master gardener in every county but some of them don't have enough. They've gone through training in Springfield or Decatur or maybe even Lincoln, but they're from Mason or um, mm -hmm. DeWitt or something. They may only have three or four in their county, depending uh -huh. on... Do the they county. meet regularly mm -hmm. then? The Logan County group meets every month, and they plan their projects and prioritize. Uh, they also do the planners at Oasis and some uh -huh. of that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. um, it's been a wonderful program for the people involved. Met some great people, and uh, unfortunately, lost some great people yes, from that we program. Bob Grau is very interesting. Bob in the Grau, program, yeah. among others. Yeah, I mean the list is long, and mm -hmm. it's really near and dear to the people's hearts. They love horticulture. They love uh, the working together. Mm -hmm. You know, who else would work that hard to give? their plant sale money to the extension office. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. 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 Well, over and above and beyond the, uh, the community service, then it enters, I presume, to the individual's benefit as what he or she wants to do around their own home as a result of what they have learned in that program. Right. They, uh, 
you go through ten sessions with uh, mm -hmm. some pretty educated people, and I mean it's broken down into soils and uh, woody perennials and herbaceous ornamentals and uh, like in like insects. Yeah. Insects, I'll, I'll yeah. get that one right, huh? Yeah. Instead of entomology. Well, but I'm in my hydrangea phase, and I'm very well is it, is unacquainted it? with anything to do with horticulture. I, ho I hope so, because I hope everybody gets in that phase. <laughs> I just love them. But that only thing I know about them is that the soil, being one way, produces one color flower, and being another way, it depends on the acidic yeah. value of the soil. To me, that's amazing. Can you give me any insight into how in the world, the, how do it know what its soil is composed of? <laughs> You worry too much, Judy. It happens. <laughs> Some things you just accept at face value or they keep you up at night. Well, I do stay up on I, I I listen to the radio while you people are wasting time sleeping. <laughs> well, during your tenure here, uh, thank goodness you've been able to stay with us. I was afraid, oh, we, were gonna, I was afraid we were going to lose you with this shuffling around here. Uh, is there any one particular, not problem per se, but one incident or, or a series of things that have, that have stuck out in your mind, John, that, that while you've been with us? Uh, with that's those, a kind of a broad, broad Yeah, yeah, that's a question. broad question. There's and been I, a lot of great did, things I, I that have, have happened. Uh, one of the great things that happened was uh, when the council group got together and passed the extension referendum in the county. Mm -hmm. That that involved thousands of volunteer hours when they went and pounded doors and passed a referendum in support of extension. Uh, that's one of the great things. Uh, the reorganizations have been tough because they've changed jobs and this one is probably the toughest of all because it involves not just being able to look inside of Logan County, but it's a three-county staff because mm -hmm. uh, it offers some great things. After July 1st, we're going to have a small farms educator, a horticulture educator, a really? youth development, a Metro 4-H educator that will also service Logan County. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been one of the tough things is uh, after they did away with the advisor thing and the federal money went out of the counties, uh, we lost our youth development educator and uh, the people we have in the office have done a great job with the 4-H program but they're not the uh, master's degreed educators that mm -hmm. can come in and do mm -hmm. some of the other things that hopefully we'll have good access. You know them. down here in Logan County down through the all of my memory 4-H uh, has been such an important project for farm youngsters uh, boys and well as the girls and uh, it has really had a, a major impact in a, more urban areas such as big city up north here uh, on the lake uh, how do, uh, how does that uh, um, benefit those youngsters up there you see we're we're agricultural we're rural here and and they're urban up there how does that program work with those folks well <clears throat> and that's one of the misconceptions is that 4 H is strictly only rural, rural. Mm -hmm. uh, at one time, Cook County had the biggest 4-H program in the state, even bigger than McLean County. Interesting. Um, there's over 150 projects, Bill. They go all the way from gardening to visual arts to... Photography. Uh, you, you see some sprinkling of them out at mm -hmm. the fair. Robotics, mm -hmm. computers. Mm -hmm. There's something for everybody if they're interested in doing it. But the project work is part of it. You know, the other part is the leadership that gets developed, the yes. citizenship, yes. Um, mm -hmm. the community service aspect, and you get to know people from all all walks of life. And that's mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, that's probably what life's about is getting to know people and yeah. you know the differences that exist and that kind of thing and in the end I would say 4-H helps us produce good kids who become the leaders. It was interesting we were over at the Ag Engineering Club banquet at the U of I one year and uh, took a picture of the officer group uh, along with one of the people who presented a big check to the club from John Deere. They were all from Logan County. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. If you can imagine that. Isn't know, that the, wonderful? Yeah. And, Does that uh, make you a little proud, John? <laughs> <laughs> and at uh, one time, uh, most of the Office of Advancement at the College of Aces at the U of I were Logan County 4 H alums. You know. Yeah, think of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, because uh, they learned that early. Early on in life, as youngsters, they, they wanted to excel and mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. done so. Uh, same thing with some of the ADM employees, John Deere employees. You know, uh, it helps raise great kids. Yeah, well, some folks have a oh, yeah. misconception that 4-H applies only to those youngsters who live on farms, and nothing could be further from the truth. And most don't. And most do not. In fact, that's correct. Even that's in Logan County. Oh, right it, here. About half of them come from the city of Lincoln. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's probably more rural ties with grandpa <clears> and <throat> uncles and yeah. that kind of thing. And Logan County, for the size of county, has one of the largest livestock groups and exhibitions for a county. I mean, sure, if you take McQueen County with five times as many members, it's yeah. it's larger. But Logan County's always number one, two in the swine show down at the state fair with numbers and uh, fairly strong in the beef numbers. You know, and for a fairly small county, that's that's something to be said. You bet, you bet it is. Oh, it, I agree, it is invaluable. My kids were in 4-H. I, <coughs> growing up, I had no idea there was a 4-H. Had n no idea about anything like that. And when we moved down here, and I heard about it, I thought, well, it certainly wouldn't have anything to do with us. We lived in town, yeah. and I learned. And we've been very successful in having kids get to go to Club Congress. And uh, it's been a long time since we had anybody go in animal science. Most of them have been in leadership, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, achievement area, which is all their project work, you know. So they're uh, general areas that uh, they're competing with kids throughout the state of Illinois on and winning national trips on. Well, it's interesting uh, to, to watch the involvement. Animal husbandry as such used to be a very big thing here. You hardly go by a farm if you didn't see uh, uh, cattle out there or sheep. Or, uh, and, of course, now it's down to uh, uh, those who, and there are very few in Golden County, I guess, who feed cattle uh, for shipment. Uh, it's very specialized. Uh, uh, really, a lot of the show opportunities have kept the small herds, flocks, and so forth around, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to keep a few for the kids and grandkids to show because it, it, it's a tough business being in the livestock business, you know, the crop producers are saying, all right, we got $6, $7 corn. Yeah. The livestock guys are buying that to feed those animals. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why the part of the reason the price is going up in the meat case at the grocery store and the other part, of course, is the transportation and the plastic wrap and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, animals are a tough business. Well, we watch the smaller farms uh, uh, dry up and go into bigger farms, and, and the first thing you know, uh, uh, a 240-acre farm, which at one point in time was a pretty decent-sized operation, is absolutely nothing anymore today. Yeah. Uh, and on that 240-acre farm, you find a lot of animals, uh, usually a mix. Uh, that's gone. Uh, and at one point in time, we used to ship by truck uh, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of livestock right up to Chicago to the uh, stockyards. Sure. Uh, by uh, Wilbur Coburn did a lot of that uh, track and others too. Yep. So uh, those days are gone. It's different. And it's all different. Go ahead, Mrs. Busby. I you forgot. Do <laughs> <laughs> but like everything, agriculture's become much more specialized. Yeah. People yeah. are specializing in corn and soybeans row crops, or they're mm -hmm. specializing in producing swine, or they're specialized in feeding beef cattle and. Uh, that's what it takes to be efficient. What's what would be the ratio, uh, acreage-wise, I suppose, here, um, of of the of the smaller farmer as opposed to the uh, the big confined hog operations, for instance. Well. There's actually been an increase in the number of farms that's been a trend over the last 15 years, but the growth is coming in the extremely large and the extremely small. Uh -huh. So those under five acres that are doing specialty production of peppers or farmer's market type things, mm -hmm. uh, possibly nursery trees, and the people who are uh, doing the very intensive mm -hmm. row crop production as much ground as they can get. Mm -hmm. 
Well, once again, Judith Kay, we've uh, uh, ex- used up our allotted time here. Mr. Ash wants to get on to uh, some other program of some sort. I can't imagine why it would be more interesting than what we do, but we always try to close, John, with uh, a quote. And I found one that says, uh, Spring uh, comes in usually late or unusually early. Usually. Thank you for viewpoint. <laughs>